chapter one, I like to go over introduction to personal evangelism. All right, before I start the class, my name is Peter Kim. Okay, you can call me Peter, you can call me Nam, whatever you like to call me, all right? So that is course title, Personal Evangelism. Okay. When we talk about personal evangelism, what is definition of evangelism? Okay, there are two main uh, categories for uh, two major definitions. One is uh, its original definition, and then second is more related to the Bible. Um, in the Bible, Jesus commanded us what we can do. So that's the description of Jesus saying in the Bible. All right. The definition of, um, I mean, the evangelism is actually that is practice of sharing the Christian message. Okay, later we want to cover what is the main message is like. Okay, and particularly the good news. Good news we call gospel, okay, of salvation through Jesus Christ with other people. So it is a simple. We spread out, we share the message in the Bible. The message is All about Jesus. Okay? Through Jesus, we can get salvation. That's the definition of evangelism. Okay? Once you believe you have faith in Jesus, you get salvation. You can have eternal life with Jesus. That's the all about evangelism. Okay, so we're gonna share, we're gonna spread out that message to other people. That is the definition. <clears throat> also, when we talk about definition of evangelism, uh, we have to cover. We cannot end, um, get rid of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is actual order, actual what Jesus tell us in the Bible. That's the Great Commission. Okay, Great Commission is referring to the instruction that is given by Jesus Christ to disciples. Disciple means actually, you know, Paul, Paul, I mean, Paul, Peter, James, you know, you, you, you know that there are 12 disciples, right? And then also include all other people who believe, who have faith in Jesus, okay? Disciple means not only talking about 12 disciples, okay? Anyone can be disciple who have faith in Jesus. So, disciples, and uh, it is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, the book of Matthew that is actually described. Chapter 28, verse 16 to 20. It says, 
where uh, you know the meaning of that the scripture is when he commissioned them to spread the teachings of Christianity to all nations. That's the meaning of Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Uh, it, uh, that scripture is foundational uh, verses of Christian theology. So that emphasizing the evangelism, discipleship, and the spread of gospel. That uh, message is delivered to worldwide. So people like to explore more about uh, the significance of and uh, or implications that is all about the uh, Great Commission. That's the instruction. The instruction means we can find book of Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to, uh, through 20 Jesus says spread the teaching of Christianity to all the people. That's the instruction. Okay. Okay. Uh, there are importance of spreading gospel to the world. Okay. That is evangelism. Okay. Mm. Christians believe that the gospel contains the ultimate truth about humanities and uh, our relationship with God and then the nature of sin and the means of redemption through Jesus Christ. Because in the Bible, when we talk about evangelism, that mm, counts all of our sins, all of our relationship with God, uh, the redemption, the salvation, that is covered in uh, evangelism. So, therefore, spreading this message is uh, is an act of love, obedience to God's command to share this love and salvation with other people. That's the message. And then the, and then the, uh, the main topic of evangelism. Okay, uh, we can make it uh, some small category about evangelism. Okay, first, salvation. Okay, we want to talk about later. These, these are main topics. We 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 have all the answers about those topics when we have faith in Jesus. Okay. Then uh, next topic is transformation. Third one is purpose of meaning. And justice, reconciliation. Next, eternal impact. Next, the mission mandates. Mandates means great commission. We do what Jesus tells us that's the mission mandate and then finally all we do in uh, have uh, having faith in Jesus is final goal is glory to the God that is um, yeah, final uh, purpose of evangelism and spreading gospel, we have faith in Jesus. <clears throat> okay.
Okay, personal evangelism. Uh, we're gonna go over more detail about salvation. Okay. Uh, the gospel message reveals God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. When you look at the Bible, you can find out the God's next main plan for saving us from the sins that is descended from Adam. But we believe in Jesus, we can be saved. That's the God's plan. So that proclaims that through faith in Christ, sacrificial death and resurrection, people can be reconciled to God, receive forgiveness of sins, and experience the gift of eternal life. That is the same in Bible. Book of John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and one son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the message of book of John chapter 3, 16. And then the Romans, we can find out the God's plan. Book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. If you declare with your mouth, you just say, right? Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from death. That is a resurrection, right? After crucifixion, he resurrected. So that is raised from the dead. You will be saved because for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess. Profess means confess your faith and you are saved. That's the message of Roman. Book of Roman chapter 10, verse 9 to Okay, I want to show you a short video. So, what is evangelism actually? Actually means gospel. Okay, gospel means when we have faith in Jesus, we are forgiven from our sin. We are saved. Eventually, we have a reconcile to God. Finally, we have eternal life with Jesus. That's the gospel. Okay? Spreading gospel means evangelism. Okay? Gospel means good news. 
So you spread the good news to other people. That is evangelism. That's the definition of evangelism. So uh, in this short video, it's gonna explain. Uh, uh, just you know, watch. Any Christians, or if you happen to Christians, or if you happen to be one, you've probably heard the word gospel as a kind of summary of Christian belief, connected to phrases like, God loves you, or Jesus died for your sins. But over time, religious words like gospel can lose their power and meaning by becoming too familiar. So, let's take a moment to rediscover what this important word, gospel, meant to the people who wrote the Bible. Gospel translates the Old Testament Hebrew verb, visea, and the noun, besora. The Greek New Testament equivalent is euangelion, which is a compound word. You means good, and angelion means announcement. All of these words mean good news, but what kind of news? Well, in Hebrew, beser is what we might call national news, or a royal announcement. Like when King David hears a messenger of beser that his army was victorious in battle. That means he still rules on his throne over the people of Israel. And after David dies, his throne is passed on to Solomon, his son. And when he was inaugurated as king in Jerusalem, so, a herald spreads the Bethlehem, that a new ruler is in charge. But after Solomon's death came a bunch of bad news kings, whose corruption led their nation into self-destruction. This is why the prophet Isaiah announced the good news that one day the God of Israel would come as the cosmic king to confront all corrupt and violent kingdoms and restore his rule over all nations. And so, when Jesus of Nazareth hit the public stage, he continued Isaiah's gospel when he went around announcing the euangelion of God's kingdom. Jesus claimed that God was restoring his reign over his people Israel and over all nations, and he was the one bringing it all about. Now, the euangelion about a new king in charge means a new way of life. Jesus said that living in God's kingdom meant following him by putting down the sword and seeking peace through radical forgiveness and generosity, even toward your enemies. His good news required you to make a decision. This is why Jesus took his euangelion to Jerusalem to confront the corrupt and violent kingdoms of his day. But he challenged them in a surprising way with the power of God's generous love. As Jesus was being executed by his enemies, he received his crown and was mocked as a fake king. But he displayed true royal authority by forgiving his tormentors. Jesus was the one in charge that day, giving his life for the sin of others. And then, a few days later, everything changed. Jesus rose from the dead as the true king, whose love is stronger than death. He appeared to hundreds of his followers and told them to spread the Evangelion that all authority in heaven on earth now belongs to him. And they did share this good news all over the ancient world. They did it by writing the four accounts of Jesus' life that are the Gospels. That is, they tell the story of how Jesus brought God's kingdom, how he lived for others and died for their sins, and then was raised from the dead. Jesus' followers also share the good news by simply talking about it. This is why Peter and Paul, or Priscilla and Aquila, traveled all around sharing the royal announcement. While it might look like the rulers of our world are in charge and can do whatever they want, the good news is that the crucified and risen Jesus is the true Lord of the world, the real king of all creation. And in Jesus' kingdom, things are different. It's where the real leaders are the servants, because the last are first, and the first go to the back of the line. 
is where the hungry are fed and the homeless are welcome because love is the most powerful reality of God's kingdom. And this good news is not easy to believe. It actually sounds kind of crazy when you first hear it, but something happens when people tell the story of Jesus and start living like he really is the king of the world. That's when this gospel becomes the best news that you've ever heard. But <clears throat> so gospel is good news. The message is Jesus died for our sin. Then we are saved. We have the reconciliation to God. Reconciliation means a pebble. Then uh, we can uh, be promised to live eternal life. That's the gospel. All right. So um, still, you know, I keep going. Uh, the the detail definition of salvation. Okay. Um, Here are the uh, you know, process of salvation. Um, it might be different uh, by uh, many different denominations. Uh, denomination means you know, uh, pedestrian, right? Majorly, um, um, when we talk about Christianity, it might be Catholic. That's the major, and another major is, you know, uh, Protestant. When we talk about the Protestant, there are many different um, denominations, like the Presbyterian, Methodist, you know, Baptist. Uh, these are all denominations. They have a little different opinion about, uh, you know, uh, in more detail about how we can be saved. Sometimes, how they want to interpret the Bibles. So, I don't say which one's right, good, uh, just, you know, recognize that there are little difference in uh, interpreting the Bible messages. Okay, um, little, little explanation why, okay. Okay, we are all. Telephone. Uh, is written Hebrew. Okay, New Testament. Written Greek. So, um, it can be, <laughs> it can be many, many variation, uh, you know, spread out based on uh, uh, the cultures. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, because the original language was translated to other language. So the context of that language, actually the, uh, the words, meaning might be changeable or might be misinterpreted by other culture or, or uh, based on the people who live in certain particular society or particular culture. So there's so there's you know variations 
and when we talk about many different uh, the message we uh, interpret differently it is a uh, denomination in uh, protest time <clears throat> anyway so this is this is common the process of salvation whatever denomination once you are protestant most christian recognize this is common even though we have we believe in uh, we practice our christianity in different denominations okay so process of salvation often understood with christian theology okay christian theology also different from all denominations i don't say that is right wrong okay people just interpret the bible differently based on the people they have the situation or culture or the opinion it is very anyway so christian theology that refers to the journey or pathway the step-by-step -step instruction kind of by which individuals attain take the forgiveness of sin reconcile with god and have eternal life that's the main message okay about gospel we are forgiven we have reconciliation with god and we have eternal life that's the gospel evangelism is we spread that message to other people more detailedly there are some process of how we can sort uh, we can have salvation the first recognition of sin <laughs> we are all sinners nobody is free from the sin even though you don't you you, you keep the law you don't obey any other i mean uh, you know unlawful it doesn't matter because we are descendants of Adam. No matter how you country you live, how you uh, have cultural background is different, it doesn't matter. We are all descendants from Adam and Eve. We are all brothers and sisters. So the sin is degenerated to people so that means recognition of sin nobody is free from we are all sinners also we we live every day we are in everyday life of you know living we do no matter how big or how little we do some kind of sins to ourselves to people to my wife whoever you meet in the life so that is important Recognition of sin, repentance. Repentance means accept that we are all sinners and that making up your mind, you are not gonna make any sins by the power of Jesus Christ. Okay?
And then faith in Jesus Christ. You have faith in Jesus Christ. Justification by grace. Uh, justification. Uh, I don't. I don't. Let me. Let me find that. In a uh, Chinese letter in Korean. Okay. Justification is uh, in Korean. Uh, I think it is Yi Shin. E. Okay, let me find out uh, in a uh, Chinese letter. Okay, quickly. Mm, let's see. I can't find out in here. Google Translate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Translate. <clears throat> it is Korean. Okay. In uh, that is translated and let's say Chinese anyone recognize that Chinese letter Yishin Chingyi uh, let me let me uh, zoom in recognize that letter <laughs> by believing in Jesus and the grace coming from the God we are entitled I am justified I, we have justification from God that's in Shin Chen Yi in Shin Chen Yi sounds good and then let's see in uh, uh, let me see in uh, okay Japanese okay, right here Japanese e -shin -chin? make sense yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah so that's the process one of the process of uh, uh, salvation. Okay. Okay. Right here. <clears throat> okay. Justification. Uh, let me let me have where. Let's see where. Okay. This one. Okay, justification uh, is, you know, yi xin qin yi, Chinese, yi xin qin, Japanese, Korean, yi xin qin yi. Almost same sound. <laughs> okay, then regenerations. We are born again by uh, believing in Jesus. <clears throat> that means renewal. Finally, we go over the final, almost the final uh, status of uh, salvation that is sanctification. Okay, uh, we call uh, in Korea that is Songwa, Songwa, sanctification. Okay, and then assurance of salvation and eternal life. So that is kind of process first you take you accept you are sinner I am guilty I'm not free from the sin then you repent you have faith in Jesus and then justification is received from the God Okay, regeneration, born again, 
sanctification, the most highly, uh, like, you know, virtual, high moral uh, status of, uh, I mean, the believers. That's the sanctification. And assurance of salvation, finally, we are promised that we have eternal life. That's the process of salvation. <clears throat> okay, the process of salvation. Oh, okay, I think it, that uh, that is covered. Okay, that is covered. Next slide. Okay, uh, salvation is. Actually, nothing to do with people's efforts. The salvation is all coming from Jesus, coming from God. So we call the salvation is grace. Salvation is uh, salvation uh, uh, is uh, we say it is in in him. that is coming from God and uh, Chinese. Ching Lai? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a That is coming from God. It is nothing to do with us. Okay. Convert person that is coming from God. Jesus. That's a in Korea. That's the grace. Okay, then faith. Faith in Christ is essential. If you don't believe in Jesus, there's no salvation. Okay? So Christians believe that by uh, placing their truth, trust, faith in Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior, So you receive the forgiveness of sins, you are reconciled with God. You believe in Jesus, who is my Lord, who is my Savior. You believe that, you receive salvation. Then we have let me see reconciliation. Okay, uh, translate that one. Re, uh, where was it? Okay, uh, better explanation. Bit is okay. That is English. You shall have how? Reconciliation with God. In uh, Japanese. That is. Kami to Wakai Chita. That is all coming from. We have uh, recover good. That means we recover good relationship with God. Okay, that is reconcile, reconciliate 
with that. We recover. We have a before believing Jesus, we have bad relationship with God. Okay? Since we have faith in Jesus, that means reconcile. Reconcile means we have now recover good relationship with God. And repentance, so we acknowledge our sinfulness. Okay? We are full of sin. Okay? Yeah. Then turning away. We are turning away from the sin that I made in every day. Also, another sin that is coming from Adam to our generation. So we are turning away from the sin by the power of Jesus. So that is essential about uh, salvation. You still make sin, you still give a hard time or you still give you know the pain to other people, you don't love yourself, you don't love your neighbor, you don't love your, I mean, the Jesus, that means still you are sinful. Okay? So repent means I don't want to make any sin anymore. So that involves change of our heart, our mind. The actual life, mind change, and actual act and practice is different, right? Right? But we try, we try not to make sin by the guidance of Bible or the teaching of Jesus Christ. That's repentance. It's okay, right? You can read the uh, slides, okay, right? And then atonement. In Korean, we uh, said dress haham, okay? So atonement, the death of Jesus on the cross, a cross that is understood, the atoning for our sin. Jin Rui no Chu Mi O Chu Gu Nao. That is, we are all recovered, we are all atoned by the sacrification, crucifixion of Jesus. Okay, I am guilty, okay? Uh, I am bad, good. for example, I am bad person. I do make many crimes. So I go to court. I am sentenced, like, you know, 10 years prison, 20 years prison, right? But Jesus, when we believe, Jesus is Taking our crime, our sin, by sacrificing his life. When we make crime, I sacrifice myself in prison, right? But the sacrificing myself instead of death, Jesus did for me. 
That's the atonement. Okay, regeneration. Okay, salvation brings about the spiritual reborn. Not body is uh, reborn again, right? A regeneration means our mind, our birth is renewed. That is regeneration. So believers transform, change by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit means uh, we call Songnyeong in Korean. I think you guys know that too. Um, Holy Spirit. Shayre, Shayre, Songnyeong, Shayre, Songnyeong. In uh, Chinese, Shen Shen De Ling Kun. Is it correct? <laughs> okay, that's the Holy Holy Spirit. Once we believe in, once we believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit is stay within our mind, our heart. Okay? Always Holy Spirit is stay inside myself. So with help of Holy Spirit, we don't want to make any bad things, any crimes. We don't want to make any sin. That's regeneration. We change. We transform to other person. Okay, eternal life actually means we are promised the hope of eternal life. With God in heaven. In heaven, there is no pain, there is no sin, no suffering, no death. We live forever. The one with Jesus, the one you love in actual, I mean, in this real world. So some people says, you believe, you are promised to live eternal life, and then you meet, you go to heaven, you meet your father who already died, you know, mother, grandmother, grandfather, have a relationship, having good times, something like that. Okay, another important issue Topic when we talk about personal uh, evangelism, actual means spreading gospel. Okay, that is evangelism. Spreading gospel. Gospel means good news. So once we believe in, we make transfer. The gospel has power to transform our lives from darkness to the light. Unhappy to happy. From bondage, bondage means we are, um, we are in a situation. Our freedom is limited. You know, I cannot do anything myself but once we have freedom we do anything by uh, the guidance of Jesus that's the freedom so the transformation means you get healings restore 
restorations and new of life for those who repent, believe in Jesus. Okay, actual verse is coming from the Bible, book of Corinthians 2, chapter 5, verse 17. So therefore, if anyone in Christ the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. That means our spirit, our mind, our heart is changed as a new person. Another verse, Ephesians. Book, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. For it is by grace you have been saved. You cannot save yourself. Okay, We are all saved by the power, guidance of Jesus. And this is not from yourself. It's nothing to do with the efforts we make. That is gift of God. That is all 100% gift coming from Jesus. Not by your work. How hard you try you do good work, not believing in Jesus is meaningless. It is nothing. So, no one can boast, for we are God's handwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That is the transformation explain in the Bible verse. Okay, uh, we cover more about transformation. Okay, transformation means conversion. Okay, transform open and begin with conversion, which is the moment when the person turns to Jesus Christ in faith. At that time, you know, you acknowledge your needs for salvation. Or, oh, I feel like I really have to receive salvation. People who believe in Jesus, they might have certain point of time they feel like I wanted to be saved. That is the moment of conversion. And accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That means that point, from that point, you try to be new person. In belief, in faith, in Jesus. Renew of your mind. Okay. Once you believe, some point after that, you become new person in your mind. Before believing Jesus, I complain a lot. I don't like this. I don't like that. You know. <laughs> now, most likely, I I still have a hard time. Okay, that's coming from every direction. But, in my mind, I have appreciation. Thank God. Giving me hard time. Then, give me the power, give me the strength to overcome. 
that hard time. That's the change of my life. I still do complain, okay? But more likely, I do have mind of appreciation. Before that, almost everything I complain on, <laughs> everything. <laughs> That's the change of mind. So that is uh, described Roman book of Roman chapter twelve verse two. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Everybody complain to you know others. We deceive others, right? We do make a crime to others. That's the real world. Also, in other and in contrary, some people do uh, you know do good things to others, right? But once you change your mind. So that, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test or prove what God's will is. God's will means what God wants us to do once we believe in Jesus. So pleasing perfect will that entires and entires mean it can't, it goes along with it, right? It stay with the shift in thinking perspective. Sometimes you believe in Jesus, you change your point of view, you change world view. Before believing in Jesus. My world view, money is everything. Yeah. I believe in money. I believe in economy. That's my world view. But since believing in Jesus, I changed my world view. The point is <laughs> love. I wanted to tr practice Jesus' love. That's my point of view. That's my world view now. I don't do good, but I try. I try my best. Practice love of Jesus. So you align your life through with our thoughts, with God's truth that is revealed in Scripture. Uh, also regenerate, we talked about earlier, right? That means you're born again. Not physically, okay? You're born again in your spirit, in your mind. So that is described book of John chapter 3, verse 3. So Jesus replied, replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. That means you born again spiritually. You born again in your mind. Then you can see the kingdom of God. That's the message of book of John. Chapter 3, verse 3. See, that means born again means spiritual rebirth. You born again is spiritual. So you have a new nature, you have new identity. Okay, transformation covers uh, sanctification, spiritual growth, service, and missions. Okay, sanctification means 
Christian transformation is ongoing process. Okay, once you bled in Jesus, we you become totally different person. It is nothing like that. Okay, it is a step by step process. It is ongoing process. Every day you practice love of Jesus, you become different person. You become different. You have different identity. You have different uh, spirit. So where believers are set apart for uh, God's purpose, progressively conform to the image of Christ. Okay, when I have uh, you know, difficulties, hard time, I always try to make image of Jesus. Why Jesus has this kind of problem? I always ask. I try to copy, I try to, you know, act exactly the meaning of Jesus' love. So, uh, that involves love, joyful, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. In those uh, you know, sort of category, we change, we transform. We try to be more self-control. We try to be more gentle. We try to be more generous. To people. We try to practice more love to others. That's our main topic is transformation. More detailed sanctification means we try more love, we try more, we try make the peace. That's a topic of sanctification. And spiritual growth, once you believe, your spiritual growth and maturity. Uh, you do this, you have to do this. You do prayer, you participate in worship, you study of scripture, of Bible, and fellowship with other believers. By practicing those things, your spiritual growth is accomplished. And then another topic, transformation means service and mission. Okay, transform the individuals. Once you are believing Jesus, you are practice, live out your faith in a certain way. Like you're serving others, you share the message of God with others, you practice love, also you give redemption, you forgive other people. That's the salvation and the, the service and the mission. That is the part of a Christian transformation and then purpose of meaning we can find the purpose and meaning of our life in the message the message is good news right spreading good news is evangelism in the good news we can find 
the true meaning, true purpose of our life, my life. That is the topic of this uh, slide. So, uh, you know, gospel, good news provide people with sense of purpose. What is purpose of your life? And then the meaning of your life. It is all coming from revealing the God's love and His plan. He has plan for everyone. Okay, uh, before I complain like as I complain a lot, right? I tried my best, but the outcome was not like the one I wanted, right? <laughs> I tried to make a lot of money, but I always fail. But I believe one thing. There's not my time. Always God has plan to my, make myself shining. I don't know when it is that I can be shining, but God has plan. I don't know when, how, but I try my best in everyday life. That's my change. I'm just waiting. My time is coming. I don't know when. All right. And then that answers existential question. Why are you born in this world? Sometimes we, we have questions. We question to ourselves, right? Why am I born in this world? But if you study Bible, if you try to find the answer in the Bible, if you try to, uh, if you believe in Jesus, you may find the answer. So your identity, your significance, your importance, and your destiny, you can find in the gospel. So finally, you can understand your life of true meaning. Okay, in the Bible, John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have, I mean Jesus. Jesus have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Another verse, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. In Him, we also choose, having, having been predestined, predestined according to the plan of Him who worked out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will, in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of His glory. Okay, another topic of uh, purpose and meaning of gospel relationship with God. That is reconciliation. Okay? The, the foundation of Christian purpose meaning is 
found in knowing and having a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Christians believe that humans were created by God for fellowship with Him. Finally, the gods, the purpose of creation ourselves is to have good for us, to have good relationship with God Himself. That's the main reason the creation of our, I mean, humankind. And ultimate fulfillment and meaning that is found in the relationships. We can find purpose and meaning of our life by doing glory to God. Uh, glory to God that involves living in a way that reflects God's characters, attributions, and purpose, and ultimately acknowledging Him as the source of all meaning and significance. By doing this, we give glory to God. A God. And love and service, one more time, it is the meaning of loving God and loving others. Jesus commanded the most important, whatever uh, Jesus say, I don't care, you don't forget, or you don't remember, just remember one thing, what Jesus said. Jesus said, love yourself, love God, love your neighbor. That's it. If you want to practice, that is the pathway that you practice Jesus' love, you make reconciliation with God. Loving God with means with your whole heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, you love the God, you love your neighbor, you love yourself too. So it says on Mark chapter 12. Verse 32 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Okay? And with your soul. And with your mind. And with your strength. Love the God. Love the neighbor. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment great than this. That is the greatest command coming from Jesus. Love yourself, love the God, love your neighbor. With your spirit, with your mind, with your heart, with your strength. If you practice this, you're the most 
precious, valuable Christian. So this includes the act of service. You practice service of the people who have in this something. That is the service. Compassion, right? Compassion is you you help uh, people in poverty. That's compassion, one of the compassion. And then selflessness. It is really hard. You become selflessness. But you practice. Selflessness means you die right away for other people's life. It's nothing like that. The most important thing is you love yourself too. And then at the same meaning applies to God and the neighbor. I think one more slide. We uh, okay, good thing. We okay with this slide we can finish okay. the first. Okay, purpose of many continuing the fulfillment God's will. What is fulfillment? God has specific. Plan. God has plan for us. Okay? Then purpose. He has. Plan.